Hey everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you my favorite top 14 tips and tricks for pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. There are lots of great ones that I think will make data analysis even easier for you. If you wanna jump around this video, feel free to use the timestamps down below. Also, if you wanna follow along, I've included sample data in the description. All right, let's jump into Microsoft Excel and let's check these out. Tip number one, you can use natural language to automatically create pivot tables and to answer business questions. Here in Excel, my manager recently came up to me and said, hey Kevin, can you tell me how many cookies have we sold to the customer Acme Bytes in 2020? I've heard that pivot tables can help me with this, but how do I use them? Well, luckily Excel can do the heavy lifting for me. Within Excel, up on the top tabs, click on the one called home and all the way over on the right hand side, there's a newer option called analyze data. Let's click on this. This opens up a pane over on the right hand side where I can get insights on my data. Now, before I ask my specific question, down below I can see different recommendations or suggestions. Basically, this is Excel looking at all of my data over here and it comes up with interesting views of my data. I could choose one of these and I could insert a pivot table, I could insert a pivot chart, and that's pretty easy. But I came here with a specific question in mind. I wanna know how many cookies we sold to Acme Bytes. So here I'll type in, let's say units sold to customer Acme Bytes, and let's say in 2020. So that's the question I have. Here I'll hit enter and whoa, look at that. It looks like Excel automatically looked at my data and figured out that we sold 255,000 cookies to this customer. And right here I can insert a pivot table. When I click on this, this opens up a new sheet with a pivot table created for me. Here I'll zoom in a little bit and we see that it filtered it down to the customer I was interested in. It looks like it also figured out the date and here it tells me how many cookies we sold. So here it created a pivot table on my behalf and I didn't have to do any of the heavy lifting of going in and choosing what filters or rows or values I want. Excel did all of that for me. Tip number two, you can click into values in a pivot table for additional details. Here I have my first pivot table, complements of Excel. And here I see that Acme Bytes, we sold 255,000 units. But let's say I wanna see the specifics of some of those orders. Maybe I wanna know the revenue, the cost of some of those orders. Here I could simply double click on that value. And here I get another Excel sheet generated for me. And I see every single order by the customer Acme Bytes. I can see what product they ordered, the revenue, the cost. So this allows me to very easily jump into the details directly from a pivot table. Tip number three, you can create a pivot table using multiple tables of data. How do you do this? Well, first off, you need at least two tables and you also need some common field between those tables. Here, for example, I have a table with customer information for the Kevin Cookie Company, and this table has a customer ID. Here, I'm gonna jump to another table with all of our orders. And here too, I have a field with the customer ID. So I can connect these two tables together. To connect them, go up to the tab on top called data. And within data, within the section called data tools, click on relationships. Here, I can define relationships between these two tables. To create a new relationship, click on new. And here I need to define what tables I want to relate. Here I'll select my customer table and I'll also select the order table. Over on the right hand side, I needed to specify what key I want to connect these on. So what is the common value between these two tables? And as we saw when we looked at these two tables, it's the customer ID. So here I'll select customer ID and in the order table, I'll also select the customer ID. This looks good, so I'll click on OK. I've now defined all my relationships, so I'll close this. To insert a pivot table, go up to the top tabs and click on insert. All the way over on the left hand side, you can insert a pivot table. I'll click on this downward arrow and we wanna insert from a data model. When I established those relationships between these two tables, that created a new data model. Click on this. 
I'll add my new pivot table to a new worksheet and then click on OK. This now drops me into a new pivot table and I can now construct my pivot table using fields from both of these different tables. So here, for example, maybe I'll expand the customer table and let me pull the customer name down to rows. And maybe I wanna know how many cookies did each customer order, units sold, and that sits within the order table. Here I could take units sold, I'll drag it over to values, and look at this, I've now built a pivot table using data from two different tables. Tip number four, you can change the field layout and sorting options. Here I can see all of my fields, but to truly see this full list, I have to scroll down. Let's say maybe I wanna see all of these fields all at once. I can click on this settings gear and here I could shift my field layout. I'll take this one as an example and here I can see all of my fields side by side with my areas. Also, when I look over at my fields, finding a field might be difficult. The order in which all of these appear match the original data source. Here I see all of my fields from left to right and that same order applies to the fields here. I can click on the settings gear and then I could change that to A to Z. This might make it a little bit easier to find the field that I'm looking for. Tip number five, I can add new calculated fields. So right here you see I have all of these fields included, but what if I wanna add some additional fields? Here for example, I have all of my customers and I have their revenue and also their cost but maybe I wanna include another column with a profit. Now I could click in here and I could type in a formula, but that's really not the best way to do it. Instead, I'll click into my pivot table, I'll go up to pivot table analyze, and under fields, items, and sets, I can add a new calculated field. Click on this. Within the calculated field prompt here, I can type in a name for my new field and I'll type in profit. Down below, I can enter in the formula and profit is the revenue minus the cost. That looks good, so I'll click on add and then click on okay. Back within the pivot table now, you'll see now that I have a new field called profit and here I've already inserted it into values and here it shows up within my pivot table. Tip number six, you can very easily sort values within your pivot table. So right here, let's say I wanna know which customer is the most profitable. Over here, I can right click and within this menu, I can go down to sort and I can select largest to smallest. And right here, I can see that Acme Bytes is our most profitable customer. Trey Delicious, we need to work on driving some more profitability. Tip number seven, I can show values differently within my pivot table. Now right here with this profit column, it's just showing me the pure and total amount of profit for each one of these customers. But maybe instead, I wanna know what was the profitability rank? or what percent of the total profit does this customer make up? I can very easily set this. Here I'll click into this cell, I'll right click and right down within this menu, I have the option to show values as. Over here, I can choose percent of column total. When I click on this, this will show me that Acme Bytes makes up over 30% of our profit. I should be really nice to this customer. I could right click again, go back to show values as, and I have all of these other options as well. Right down here, I could rank largest to smallest. When I click on this, I can choose the base field for the customer name, I'll click on okay, and here I can see that Acme Bytes is the number one customer. Right up here, if I wanna rename this header, I could type in rank of profit, so I could just click in and change this to whatever I want. Now let's say maybe I still wanna see the total profit amount. Here I could click on this field again, I'll drag it over to values, and here I can still see the overall profit. Tip number eight, I can also choose to summarize values within a pivot table. So far, as I've been adding items to this pivot table into values, by default, it'll sum up the values. But what if I wanna know a count of orders by customer? Here I could take the order ID and I'll drag this into values. Now you'll see that it's summing up the order ID. Here if I jump to the original data source, you'll see that the order ID is just an arbitrary number. It doesn't make sense to sum that up. Back within the pivot table, instead of summing it, I wanna count it. Right over here, I'll click into any one of these cells and I can right click and I could go down to summarize values by. 
And here you'll see that it's currently set to sum. I could change it to count. There's also average, max, min, and all of these different options. I'll select on count, and here now I can see a count of all of the orders associated with each customer. So here I see Acme Bytes is not only the most profitable, but they also order the most. Maybe those two go hand in hand. Tip number nine, I can use slicers to very quickly and easily filter my data. To insert a slicer, go up to Pivot Table Analyze and under the Filter category, click on Insert Slicer. Here, I can choose what slicers I want to insert. I want to insert a slicer on the customer name and also on the product. Next, I'll click on OK. And look at that, I now have two new slicers that I can filter my data on. So let's take an example. Let's say my manager comes to me and says, hey, Kevin, I wanna know how much profit we earned from ABC Groceries for chocolate chip cookies and fortune cookies. No problem. Here, I'll click on ABC Groceries and look at that, it filtered it down to ABC Groceries. And here, I'll click on chocolate chip. I'll press control and click on fortune cookies. And here, I can tell them very quickly that we earned about a little over $200,000 from that combination. But maybe my manager comes back and says, oh, sorry, made a mistake. I didn't mean ABC groceries. I actually meant Acme Bytes. Now, typically I'd be kind of mad because I'd have to go back and reconfigure my pivot table, but here it's really not much of a problem. I could just click on Acme Bytes and look at that. My view is automatically updated using these slicers. It makes filtering a lot easier. Tip number 10, we can insert a timeline to also very quickly filter our data based on dates. Once again, right up on top under Pivot Table Analyze, under Filter, there's the option to insert a timeline. Over here, I'll select Date and then click on OK. So let's say that maybe my manager comes up to me and he wants to know how much all of our customers earned between January and April in 2020. Well, luckily I now have this handy new timeline and I could use this to very quickly get that answer. So here I'll select January and I'll go over through April and look at that, it automatically updates the profit amount for each customer between that time range. Now my boss thinks I'm a superstar and I'll probably get a promotion. Tip number 11, you can use a pivot chart to visualize your data. When you have your cursor within your pivot table, go up to pivot table analyze and over under tools, you can insert a pivot chart. I'll click on that and I'll go with one of these column charts and then click on OK. So here now you can see the profit by customer from January through April. Now the neat thing is when I use this in combination with my timeline, here I can update my filter and look at that, it automatically updates the pivot chart to reflect that. Now with these different tools of slicers and timelines and a pivot chart, I could build some pretty fancy looking dashboards. Tip number 12, I can customize my pivot table layouts. Right here, first off, when I look at my pivot table, you'll see that for each customer, it shows the subtotal. And when I go to the bottom of my pivot table, here I see the grand total. Maybe I don't wanna see that. Well, up here, I can go over to design when I have the pivot table selected. And right here, I can choose to not show any subtitles. So there you see the subtitles disappeared. I can always click back if I wanna bring them back. Also, when I go down here, I see the grand total. I could click over here and I could turn off the grand totals if I don't wanna see them. And once again, I could bring them back if I want. Along with turning subtotals and grand totals on or off, I could also change the layout of this pivot table. Right up here, I could click on report layout. And right now this is in the compact form. Here I see the customer and the products directly underneath the customer name. Now I could change this to outline form and here I get a separate column with the product. Now this could be beneficial if say, maybe you wanna filter the product separately, this might make it a little bit easier. And I have other options like tabular form. You can go through here and you can experiment with these different formats to see which one you like the best. Now let's say you go through and you customize what your pivot table looks like. You might not want to have to do this every single time that you launch a pivot table. If you want to set the defaults, you can go to the file menu, go down to options and under data, you can click on edit default layout. And here you can choose what it should look like every time you create a pivot table. Tip number 13, you can group your row labels together. 
And let's say that for whatever arbitrary reason, I want to know how my customers who start with A compare to other customers. So ABC Groceries and Acme Bytes both meet that criteria. Here I could highlight those two customers, I'll right click and I'll select Group. So now you see that they're part of Group 1. Here I'm going to collapse all of the fields and now I can compare this group to all of my other customers. Tip number 14, and unfortunately this is the last tip of today, but hopefully you've learned some good ones already. With tip number 14, you can update the row labels to appear how you want them to appear. Now right now this is just sorted alphabetically, but for whatever reason my manager really loves Trey Delicious as a customer. I don't know why they're our least profitable customer, but you know, whatever. And he always likes to see Trey Delicious at the top of the list. Here I could select Trey Delicious, I could right click and I can move this up the list if I'd like. Here I can move it to the beginning, I can move it up, down, or to the end. Alternatively, I can press Control X on that item, that'll cut it. I can go up to the top and press Control V and that'll paste it at the top. So that's a very quick way that I can order this row label list how I want it to appear. And in terms of how I want it to appear, Acme Bytes actually goes by Acme Bytes LLC. Now I could go back to the original source data, I could update it there, and then I could refresh my pivot table to factor that in. Alternatively, I could also just come in here and here I'll type in LLC, hit enter, and I can just update the value directly in here. Unfortunately, I can't do that for the profit, otherwise I would make this company look even more profitable than it already is by maybe adding a few more zeros at the end of these numbers. All right, well, those are all of my favorite tips and tricks. If you learned some new ones, please give this video a thumbs up. To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Also, if you want to see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.